Greetings scholars, Wormwood here. In the previous video, we talked about the etymology of the character Tien, so today we'll talk about its counterpart, Di, Earth. Like last time, let's see what Shuo Wen Jiezi has to say first. Di, Yuan Qi Chu Fen, Qing Qing Yang Wei Tian, Zhong Zhuo Yin Wei Di, Cong Tu Ye Sheng. Earth. When the primordial qi first separated, the light and pure yang became the sky, and the heavy turbid yin became the earth, analyzed as from tu, soil, plus ye, phonetic. I touched upon the Chinese creation myth in the last video, so I won't be repeating myself here, but we will come back to this myth a little later in the video. Shuoven also lists an alternate character, referred to as a Zhouven, or Zhou graph, which warrants some explanation. First of all, this term is sometimes translated as large seal script. However, this can be a bit misleading, mainly because large seal is sometimes used very broadly to encompass all characters that predates the Han Dynasty. The Chinese term Zhouven specifically refers to a group of characters from the book Shi Zhou Pian, a now lost work which was written during the Zhou dynasty to promulgate a standardized script and remained in use until the collapse of the Qin dynasty. While doing his research, Xu Shen added these characters whenever they differed from the Han dynasty standard script. The Zhouven form of Di, earth, can be analyzed as Fu, mound, plus Tu, soil, both semantic and, according to Qing dynasty commentator Duan Yucai, the double semantic refers to hills and plains, respectively. Finally, chi is phonetic, which in Old Chinese had a similar reading to ye. Now that we've established a baseline to build off, let's do some etymology. The earliest use of di that we have found so far is from the Warring States period. Before this period, the common way to refer to earth seems to have been either tu or fang, I'll go into these characters further in a separate video. On the bronze ware known as the King of Zhongshan's Round Kettle, we can read the words Xin Di, New Territories, the territories captured by King Tzu of Zhongshan, eulogized by his son Tietzi in the text. We can compare this use with a few lines prior on the same bronze vessel. Tian Lie, Yu Bi, Xin Tu, Hunting in the New Territories. Here, tu is used in a poetic juxtaposition with di, indicating that they were treated as interchangeable synonyms. You'll also notice that this version of di resembles the Joven character recorded in Shuoven, and in light of archaeological evidence, it seems likely that this was the original form of the character. We see the occasional use of the Joven version of di during the Warring States period, notably in the Tao of Loyalty. The earth doesn't speak, and yet it nourishes. In the larger context of the text, this is a metaphor illustrating how actions speak louder than words. Because the earth is silent, i.e. doesn't offer empty promises, but it still provides. However, the most common form that Di takes during this period is this interesting missing link between the Zhou graph and the modern character. Here we see the now familiar Fu mound plus Tu soil, like in the Zhouven, but in place of Chi we instead have Ta phonetic. We can know it's Ta and not Ye because Ye is fairly consistently written as Ko Yi in the bamboo slip texts. This glyph appears in several texts, including the excavated Laozi, Tai Yi Sheng Shui. Tai Yi generates water, and Yu Tong, thicket of sayings. In the Tai Yi generates water, we read Tian Di Zhu, Tai Yi Zhu Suo Sheng Ye. Heaven and earth are born from Tai Yi. Tai Yi, or the Great One, is often identified as the Tao. And in the Yu Tong, we read the lines Jun Yu Mo Chen, Rang Di Bu Chao. 
When the Lord has a shrewd tactician, the land will remain intact. It's good to note that a glyph that looks like the modern character D is also found in these texts. However, from the context of the text, it seems to have been an early version of Tuo collapse. I refer once more to the Yu Zong. Shan wu di zhe tuo shi wu you bu ke. As a mountain will crumble without the earth to support it, so a gentleman cannot be without friends. Also note here that di also appears in this very sentence, eliminating any doubt that these are in fact two different words altogether. Like many other characters, Di received its final standardized form during the Qin and Han dynasties. However, this was not an instant transformation. In the excavated Qin dynasty text, Ri Shu, the Almanac, Di appears in its modern use. However, it retained Ta as phonetic. This form is also seen in excavated texts from the Han dynasty. During the Han dynasty, Ta and Ye were not only homophones, but also graphically almost indistinguishable, which is probably why, by the end of the Han Dynasty, the character had largely settled into its modern form with Ye as phonetic, as illustrated by the Cao Quanbei. This character is easily recognized by modern readers, though the extra dot might raise some questions. It was common to add a dot to Tu on Han Dynasty inscriptions to make it more distinct from the graphically similar Shi. This same convention is also seen in Yu Jade to distinguish it from Wang King. However, the Zhouven glyph still saw limited use, often on seals or monuments like the Wu Ji Shan Bei from the Eastern Han, where it appears like this, where Chi has been simplified to look like the near homophone Shi, both characters being different words for pig or wild boar. Another version that emerged during the Han Dynasty, but which is often attributed to Wu Zetian, can be seen here. This one can be analyzed as Shan Mountain, Shui Water, and Tu Soil. No phonetic element present, but rather it's a logogram combining the three main components that make up the earth. Basically, it's a Chinese landscape painting done in an abstract, minimalist style. A simplified version of this character omits the mountain and leaves only earth and water. Meanwhile, a more complex variant omits the water entirely, but doubles down on the soil radical, and also adds a shi. The pig is most likely phonetic, but nothing's gonna stop me from seeing a wild pig running across the plains with a mountain range in the distance. Next up is a variant that appears in the Taoist canon. Unsurprisingly composed of zhuo, muddy, and qi, as in the turbid chi from the creation myth way back at the start of this video. This is the counterpart of the clear chi sky character, see my video on Tian Sky, and also has another variant written as red plus chi. Another Taoist Hanzi, instead of turbid chi, we here have the red chi, the counterpart of blue chi sky. Apart from Taoist scriptures, these two versions will also pop up occasionally carved on stone monuments and doorposts. Finally, while no longer standard, the cursive version of D was sometimes used to write the hiragana letter Qi. The modern standard character is instead derived from Zhi to No. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please like and subscribe for more content. And if you have any questions or requests for future videos, please leave a comment below. Until next time.